Європом. Тобто єврейці факт це вже один стереотип, тут вся на стереотипах, але вона по-доброму написана і, і вона симпатична. Right. I know, right. I guess all I can say uh, is that uh, um, uh, since I am older, I have to try harder. And every morning I do 25 push-ups. 25 sit-ups and, uh, pardon, knee bends and 60 sit-ups. So who's stronger of the two, I'll allow you. But despite the energy within my body, uh, I will not stroll around in the Frank Sinatra style uh, uh, because um, I have a few things that I'm going to note here that I can refer to. And I'm not from Chicago. Uh, but I've looked at my watch, and so my decision would be, which would have been at the very outset, to say next to nothing. Uh, reason being, I mean, what does one need to say? We, we've just written this book, and one can read the book. Whatever one has to say is already uh, in the book. Uh, but because I am a professor and we are paid to say, we are paid to talk, uh, whether we know something about the subject or not actually is irrelevant. We're expected to answer questions and comment on something. Uh, I know a little bit about the subject because I re do remember at some point writing this book. Uh, and uh, I was reminded even more just now by some of the comments of our uh, distinguished uh, readers, to all of whom I am appreciative, because this becomes a function of comparing and contrast what one had in mind as an author, what one expected to be conveyed, and what has been received. You never know what's going to happen with that which you write, how it's going to be perceived, understood, etc. Um, actually, in many ways, uh, since you were quite nice, I have to say, uh, they, you both got some of the message and, uh, and commented on some of the things that are useful to still reflect upon. Uh, I remember that uh, for many years I had an, a, uh, an assistant uh, working for the chair of Ukrainian studies uh, who was a female and who, as we say in the modern world, sensitized me to women uh, and sensitized me also to antiquity. As a result of which, I started to write more about ancient Greece and ancient Rome, uh, and, and uh, well, early Byzantium, I did study Byzantium by nature, but uh, the importance of antiquity in the evolution of Eastern Europe en general, and specifically uh, in Ukraine. I also put in much more in my second edition of the history of Ukraine uh, about women. Uh, actually, didn't think about it. I thought I was sensitized. Uh, but now we have a reader who see, sees, and probably correctly so, I don't have the book. I was about to take the book, open up the index, and look on the women and see how many pages are there. I, I don't remember, but probably not. There probably is not enough about uh, uh, women and their role in society. And, and this whole question about... Uh, Violence during World War II and uh, or during the pogroms and sexual sexual violence in particular. Actually, I never I would never even have dawned on me. See how unsensitive some of us can be. Or it's not even a question of unsensitive. It's just a question we just don't know. We don't think about these things. We all live in our own little frameworks, if you will. Uh, as I said, I don't want to speak long because it's on, we're moving on and, and there probably some of you have some questions. Uh, just a, one or two other uh, uh, comments. Uh, 
the, the, there was also, this is again from Professor Stanchis uh, talking about the famine, and we heard about this as well from uh, uh, Professor Sisson, uh, this, this disaster, disastrous event of the 20th century um, affected people. Didn't make a difference whether those people were ethnic Ukrainians, I'll come back to that in a second, uh, or Russians, uh, or Jews. It affected whoever it swept over on the territory of Ukraine during those terrible years. And actually, the highest percentage of people who died from the famine in Ukraine were ethnic Greeks. It was a big Greek population, and where did they live? Almost exclusively in the steppe lands. Uh, so I'm glad that that was noted. Our colleague, Professor Yehuda, touched on something which uh, raises the more general issue of what this book, or what I thought this book was supposed to be about, in which he took away from his read the issue of Jews and Ukrainians as victims, Jews as victims, Ukrainians as victims, you know, the whole martyrology phenomenon. Much of the discussion today from our colleagues, with the exception of Professor Stanchez, but even she as well, talked about history. This is going to come, perhaps, as somewhat of a surprise, perhaps. But just like I have nothing to say because I've already written the book, but on reflection, given a choice, I wouldn't have even had a chapter at all on history. It's too much history. Too much talking about history. Too much emphasis on history. Too much ploying and toying as if this is the only aspect of life, of society. To my mind, this book and its uniqueness, and from which I learned most, I don't believe it. Good, you haven't heard anything, that's fine. From which I learned most was the art the art not only of Jews, but Ukrainians as well. The opera, the symphonies, the sculpture, the literature, the linguistic evolution. These are the mortars of civilization and life. And not simply, alas, political structures, which more often than not, in certain circumstances, lead to destruction. But if we focus only on that, we come away with a truly distorted perception of history. So maybe it's best to throw out political history and just talk about cultural history and let the reader ask, well, was there anything else going on? We've had so much of disaster. We have had so much of death. What does it tell us about life? What does this tell us about existence? It just tells us more detail. So uh, the only other thing I would like to mention is the use of the term, and this is to end on a fun note, <laughs> well, fun note, but with my uh, colleague, uh, Professor Sisson, with whom we've operated for decades together. This idea of why we're calling, or why we've used the term ethnic Ukrainian. Well, do you know the reason why we use the term ethnic Ukrainian, actually? In this particular context, in this particular context, many of you li living in Canada, and also in the United States, know about these uh, I was about to say treason trials, I can't even think of it. You know, these investigations about war criminals. We've heard a lot about it in the Duchenne Commission in Canada. 
the various committees that were established by Congress to investigate this. And very often, among the war criminals, very often, among the war criminals that were being looked at were, were war criminals from Ukraine. And there were several examples. Now, we've all heard of J Ivan Demenyuk. Fine. OK. Clearly, ethnic Ukrainian. Right? Wrong? Guilty? Not guilty? Part guilty? Well, that's the ethnic Ukrainian. But many of these others who were up on charges from Ukraine turn out to be ethnic Germans from Ukraine or ethnic Russians from Ukraine. So when you're telling a narrative, how are you going to make this distinction? And besides the fact that this book was designed not about all the inhabitants of Ukraine versus a, it's very specifically ethnic Ukrainians. And so from that reason, we use that term. And how would one rewrite a history of the Austrian Empire, which of course we all love because we're all descendants of Franz Josef, or those of us who have been privileged to have been so, and that includes Jews, whom Franz Josef loved and cared for as his people. If we had to, we, we don't have to worry about using ethnic uh, because the Austro-Hungarian Empire was ethnic, but we do have to do one thing. So you don't have to talk about ethnic Slovaks, ethnic Romanians, ethnic Hungarian, or ethnic Magyars, or actually you do have to use Magyar, not Hungarian. Uh, uh, but the real problem is, is Germans. You never should talk about Germans when you talk about the, the other people in the Austro-Hungarian, they're Austro-Germans, because they're distinct from Germans. So, in that sense, you don't really have a problem in writing the history, a new history of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And for the fact that ethnic Jews exist, of course ethnic Jews exist. And, and, and that's not the Canadian uh, census uh, uh, that did this for the first time. Uh, the Hungarian census did this in the late half of the 19th century. The Czechoslovak census is in the interwar period where you had Jews by religion and Jews by ethnicity. In, and it's very interesting to study this to see what the relationship is between those numbers, actually, for more, more, in most cases, they come out being more or less, uh, more or less uh, equal. And of course, there are people who prefer to just identify themselves as ethnic uh, uh, Jews by ethnicity as opposed to by religious tradition. So let me, uh, first of all, just finish by, uh, by thanking uh, actually all of you for spending the time for reading this. And for all of you for coming. Uh, and listening to us talk about this book, um, we tried our best. And, you know, hopefully that might filter through to present and future readers. Thank you.